we're going to be working with a lot of numbers and math and measurements, um, at least particularly in the first part of this course. So uh, this video here is going to focus on uh, measurements to make sure that we're all on the same page whenever we talk about and report numbers. So every measurement is composed of both a number and a unit. So the number is pretty obvious, right? That's your number. Um, and your unit tells you what it is you're measuring. So for instance, a mass can be in like in this case, pounds and ounces, or it can be in kilograms. A length can be in inches or centimeters. So if you're measuring this baby, um, you would say it's 21 inches long. You just wouldn't say, oh, the baby's 21. 21 what, right? So all of our measurements need to have both the number and a unit. Um, so a number is meaningless without a unit. In some cases, a number can be really dangerous without a unit. So proper aspirin dosage, for instance, 325. Well, 325 what? Milligrams, pounds, right? You couldn't physically ingest 325 pounds of aspirin, but if you could, it would kill you. Um, if I say I run a 100-meter dash in 10, well, if I run it in 10 seconds, I should be in the Olympics or close to the Olympics. Um, if I run it in 10 days, I have some problems. Um, so in terms of the units, the English system is what most of us are more common with, uh, using things like feet, gallons, and pounds as our units. Um, in science, we're going to use primarily the metric system, uh, meters, liters, grams. Now, one thing, particularly since this course is focused on uh, healthcare professions, we need to be able to go back and forth between these units, right? You're going to have patients who tell you their weight in pounds, and you might have dosages that refer to uh, a lot of dosages will be to tell you how many, for instance, milligrams of drug per kilogram of patient. Well, in that case, you're going to need to be able to figure out what the uh, patient's weight is in pounds and convert that to kilograms, right? So we are going to do so, uh, quite a few conversions between English um, units and metric units. All right, so focusing on the metric system. So each measurement has a base unit. So if you're talking about length, the base unit is going to be meters, which is abbreviated by a lowercase m. Um, and I specify lowercase m because later on in the semester, we'll have a different uh, symbol for what a capital M is. So you have to be sure whenever you write these that you actually have the, the case correct, right? Lowercase versus uppercase. Um, for mass, the unit is going to be grams, it's a lowercase g. For volume, the unit is going to be liters, capital L. And for time, the unit is going to be seconds. So these are going to be the base units that we're kind of going to build all of our um, measurements around. Now, I mentioned earlier, right, in whenever we looked at the picture of the baby, the baby was weighed in kilograms. So it wasn't weighed in grams, it was weighed in kilograms. So again, that gram is the base unit, and then that kilo prefix, that K prefix, allows you to scale the units. And that's what this slide talks about. So other units are related to the base units by power of 10 using these prefixes and their associated symbols. So mega, kilo, deci, centi, milli, micro, nano, and there's more than that. Um, I'm actually only going to request and really focus on the ones in between here. So I want you to know these. I won't worry about you knowing mega, even though you guys have all probably seen stuff in mega, like a megabytes or megapixel camera, right? So mega uh, means a million. Um, nano is actually pretty common in a lot of... Um, like biochemical processes, because things are, like if you talk about things on like a cellular level, they're really small. So nano is still relevant. Um, most of what we're going to do in this class can be, uh, can be done in the range, though, that is in red there. So kilo, deci, centi, milli, and micro. And deci is kind of an interesting one here, because this is one that most scientists don't really use that often. However, it's actually rather prevalent in, um, in medical terminology. So it's used quite a bit. So that's definitely going to be something that we're going to look at.
Now, what these mean are as follows. So let's just focus on the ones that I have circled there. So kilo means a thousand. So kilograms mean you have a thousand grams. So a thousand grams is a kilogram. Deci means you have one tenth. So deci, anything that um, from deci on down here means that they are smaller than your base unit. So a decigram is going to be one-tenth of a gram. A centigram is going to be one one-hundredth of a gram. A milligram, one one-thousandth. And microgram, one one-millionth of a gram. So knowing these numerical values and their relationship to the base unit is going to be important as we move forward. So here's kind of um, some examples. So if we were measuring length, right, we could say that there's 1,000 meters in one kilometer. So I always try to get students to think about this from a practical standpoint. And what I mean by that is we're going to be using a lot of these conversions and I try to um, make as many things as common sense as possible without trying to just memorize, memorize, memorize a whole bunch of things. So what you need to know is that if you have kind of your length in the middle, which is meters, you're going to have kilo is big, and then deci, centi, milli, and micro are all going to be small. So if a kilometer is going to be pretty big, that means you're going to need a lot of regular meters to give you one kilometer, right? You're going to need a lot of the smaller one because regular meters are smaller than a kilometer. And if you remember that kilo is a prefix of a thousand, that means you're going to need a thousand meters to give you one kilometer or kilometer. Um, on the other hand, if you're trying to relate any of these ones, deci, centi, milli, or micro, you're going to need a lot of these to give you one meter. So in other words, you would need 10 decimeters would be one meter. 100 centimeters would be one meter. 1,000 millimeters would be one meter. And 1 million micrometers would be one meter. So let me, um, and you can see some of those over here. So I always recommend students, whenever you're doing this, all of the um, conversions on here are the same, all of the equalities are the same, but you should know kilo with this conversion, right? One kilometer is 1,000 meters. Now, for uh, the millimeters, you, you should know this one. 1,000 millimeters is one meter. Don't try to remember it with this decimal point. It, it's fine if you do, but it's a lot easier to mess up moving a decimal point or doing the math by having off whenever you type something in on your calculator with a decimal point than it is kind of having just this 1,000 to 1. And then for centimeters down here, 100 to 1. So what you can see is that the larger number, right, the 100, the 1,000, or the 1,000 is always going to be in the smaller of the two. So in other words, I'm relating meters to kilometers here. Which one of those is smaller? Well, meters is smaller than a kilometer. So we need a, a big number here, a thousand to one. A millimeter to a meter, which one is smaller? Millimeter is. So a thousand of these to one meter. And then same thing with centimeter. All right, so that's kind of the general uh, premise on how you're going to go about uh, doing these conversions. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing length or whether you're doing mass, right? So here's the same slide basically exchanging anywhere on the previous slide that you saw meters. Here we're changing that to grams. So again, a thousand grams is one kilogram. A thousand milligrams is one gram. Now on this slide, I went ahead and did micrograms instead of centigrams because rarely are you going to hear centigrams. It's just not a common uh, unit. However, micrograms are more common. So here you have 1 million micrograms is equal to 1 gram. And then the other thing I put on this slide that I wanted to point out is this abbreviation here. So typically micrograms is going to be 
this Greek symbol mu with a G. So that's micrograms. However, MCG is like a medical term. So this is going to be a medical term for micrograms. And for whatever reason, and actually I know the reason, it's um, doctors are notorious uh, for their writing. So having them, when they're writing really fast, make this mu sign is just not um, really feasible. Uh, so like if they're writing out a prescription or something, MCG is a lot easier to make out than the this mu symbol, um, primarily because it has three letters, so it's going to be much more clear. Whoops. Um, so again, so just another um, definition to know. So you should know that micro you should be able to identify micrograms by either of these symbols. Now, in terms of the conversion, these are the same as kind of what we did on that previous slide and on that chart a couple slides ago. Um, finally here, whenever you're looking at volume, so volume, the same thing, uh, kiloliters or liters, milliliters, which is a really common one to liters. And then the last one on here I wanted to point out was the uh, these numbers on the bottom. So one milliliter is going to be the same as one cubic centimeter or centimeters cubed. And that's because volume can be measured in length times width times height. So if all of those measurements are done in centimeters, whenever you do math, we not only multiply the numbers, but we also multiply the units. So centimeters times centimeters times centimeter would give us centimeters cubed. One centimeters cubed is going to be one milliliter. Now, again, in a medical setting, um, you often hear this term CCs. Well, CC stands for cubic centimeters. So CC is going to be a cubic centimeter, which is going to be the same thing as a milliliter. All right. So again, same type of conversions, uh, different base unit here. And again, kind of one extra term for you to know, like what is a CC? That's a cubic centimeter, which is the same thing as a milliliter.